Um, hi guys, uh, I'm new to this. I hope I do it okay. We're going to talk today about carbon as the backbone of life. The objectives of study carbon is to uh, describe the role and importance of carbon in supporting life and identify those compounds that are based on carbon that are important to life. Not all the uh, molecules that are important to life are one of the four biomolecules, but most of them have carbon in them. Uh, discuss the providence of God in the creation of the biosphere. You can see the scripture that I used. For you had created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know full well. Your eyes saw my unformed body. So we want to remember the providence of God in making such a complex but uh, marvelously workable uh, world. Okay, uh, all life forms that have ever been discovered are carbon-based. Could there be another kind of uh, foundation for life? Uh, we don't know of one. Now, some people have said maybe silicon, but there's a lot of problems with, with uh, trying to think about silicon as the basis of life. So right now, carbon is the only way we know that life can be built. Um, living organisms are mostly f f built of carbon-based compounds because carbon can make so many large, complex molecules because of its um, because of its ability to form these bonds that it can. The uh, biomolecules, proteins, DNAs, carbohydrates, and lipids, the four major uh, biomolecules, are um, composed of carbon. Um, Again, it can form four bonds, and it can form it can form two bonds with something. It can form three bonds with something. It's very versatile in how it can form bonds. Organic chemistry is a, a word you should know, a term you should know, and organic chemistry is the study of chemicals that are based on carbon. Uh, almost all of them are carbon and hydrogen. And um, so a few of them were carbon, hydrogen, and other molecules, but carbon and hydrogen form the basis of organic chemistry. It used to be that scientists thought that organic chemicals could only be produced by living organisms, but um, chemists were able to synthesize organic compounds by trying to mimic the um, conditions on Earth. It's a rather complex procedure, but they were able to make organic compounds out of various uh, small molecules. And of course, they could not form those in any kind of life form, but they could produce organic chemicals. So the name organic is from the fact that they used to think they could only be produced in the organisms, but now organic chemicals means it's based on carbon and hydrogen. Um, electron configuration, we know that the way uh, the electrons are in an atom determine how it can bond with other chemicals, and so um, that's very important in carbon. You can see it can form lots of different covalent bonds, and of course covalent bonds are when it shares an electron with another molecule. Carbon's very good at forming covalent, nice, firm, strong covalent bonds. I'm not going to ha have you memorize the shapes that carbon can form. Um, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, of course, the other three elements so common in body uh, in organisms' bodies are the ones that carbon bonds with most. And there they are with their valence electrons. Um, of course, uh, again, that carbon has double bonds with two oxygens. Um, and you can see in the lower one, that molecule, it's bound, bound to nitrogen and a double bond to oxygen and the nitrogen and then bound to hydrogens. So you can see it's just so versatile in the way it can form molecules. Um, most, um, we'll go here. This shows you a lot of 
hydrocarbons. If you look at that, they're all just carbons and hydrogen. There's so many molecules that are just carbon and hydrogen. And these are called the hydrocarbons, and they are very versatile, and there's a lot of them. Now, how you know a hydrocarbon is it's just carbons. The carbon backbones of organic molecules may vary in length and in location the of carbon single backbones and double bonds. Of organic molecules, molecules may vary may in length and in location of single and, and double bonds. Contain rings of atoms. Molecules may be straight or branched and may even contain rings of atoms. So you can see mostly they're saying that it's very versatile. Um, now, it's hydrocarbons are very hydrophobic, which means they resist being close to water. Now, so hydrocarbons aren't terribly useful in organic bodies because organic uh, organisms have uh, so much water. So what does nature do? She, uh, uh, nature attaches, uh, you see there, they've got some oxygen stuck in there to make a COOH on the end of these little fats, these little hydrocarbon chains. And with the COOH, then it can bond to water. It can uh, dissolve somewhat in water. So here's the hydrophobic part of the molecule. And this can be slightly hydrophilic. In other words, it can stick to the water. And that makes it much more useful in organic in organisms, in the systems of organisms. Okay, now, isomers. How much do I want you to know about isomers? I think it's very important that you know what an isomer is and um, the, the results of two or more um, molecules being isomers of each other. You don't have to know the different kinds of isomers, but just for your information, there's a structural isomer which has different covalent arrangements. In other words, the atoms are actually put together. The same, they have the same atoms, but they're put together in a wholly different format. Um, uh, cis trans have the same covalent bonds. In other words, each atom is bound to the same atom as um, in, in the main molecule, but um, they have the same bonds, but they may be in different places. So, um, and, uh, and nantiomeres are mirror image. In other words, they are put together exactly the same, only uh, molecules have sides. They have fronts and backs and tops and bottoms, and nantiomeres and are mirror images of each other. Here's some example. Here's a structural isomer. You can see that the atoms are actually bonded in different ways. The cis-tran, uh, they are, have the same bonds. This, the, uh, here's the C double bonded to C with two hydrogens and two other things, but the, uh, they're on opposite sides. They're, they're not in the same bonds, but they're not in exactly the same place. In antimeres, they're in exactly the same place, only the opposite arrangement, so they come out being um, mirror images. You don't have to be able to identify those. Three types of isomers are that structural isomers. Three types of isomers the are partnerships between structural their atoms, isomers, which differ in the geometric partnerships isomers, between their which atoms, which vary in arrangement of atoms around the double bond. Geometric isomers, which vary in arrangement in of atoms around the double isomers, bond. Which are molecules that are mirror images of each other, like left and right which hands. Which are molecules that are mirror images of each other, like left and right hands. Okay, this is what I want you to know. Um, in antimers are important in the pharmaceutical industry because one configuration may be effective, but the other configuration may have totally different effects. So it's very important that the right isomer of the compound uh, be produced. It says usually only one isomer is biologically active. We've said many, many times that the shape of a molecule is very, very important in the chemistry in organisms. Um, organisms are sensitive to even subtle variations in molecules. That shape is very important. Um, so you can see that these um, here is the mirror image, doesn't work at all. Here is the mirror image, doesn't work at all. Okay, and of course, 
we've all heard about meth and the fact that it is uh, closely associated to a nasal decongestant. De de um, and they're just mirror images of each other. Isomers are compounds that have the same molecular formulas. Isomers are compounds that have the same molecular formulas. The difference between isomers can literally mean the difference between life and death. The difference between isomers can literally mean the difference between life and death. Reduces the symptoms of Parkinson's shown on the left. Reduces the symptoms of Parkinson's on the right. Has no effect on the disease. Isomer R dopa on the right has no effect on the disease. Okay, so um, what I really want you to know from all that is how important the specific shape is of a molecule. It's not just the atoms that are bonded together, but the way the bonds are formed and the order in which the bonds are formed can make all the difference in how the body reacts to the presence of this chemical. Um, okay. Uh, some, uh, it says distinctive properties of organic molecules. Remember, organic molecules have that long carbon and hydrogen skeleton, but they may have other chemical uh, groups on the end of it. And that makes all the difference in the world. Um, here's a, a, com a very common one. Estradiol and testosterone are very important hormones in males and females. But you can see they start out looking a lot alike right here, but then they've got these different connections that make them only slightly different. These are the functional groups. Um, those are, the functional groups are those end pieces or side pieces that cause it to be biologically active. And um, it's very, those are very important um, because they're the ones that cause the reaction to happen in the body. Okay, these are seven functional groups that are most important in the chemistry of life. We won't memorize them as a group, but we will recognize them and memorize them when we're looking at a particular compound that is important in life. We'll recognize which of these it has and why that's important. Um, hydroxyl, um, there you've got the oxygen and hydrogen. Uh, polar due to electronegative oxygen, it forms hydrogen bonds with water. That is alcohol. The, the functional group is the OH. There you go. You'll have this this uh, hydrocarbon skeleton, and then you'll stick this OH on it, and it will um, then, it, then it will dissolve in water, <laughs> and it will be alcohol. Okay, again, these are the different kinds of groups that I will not cause you to know until we run into them in an organic molecule. This amino group will be very important. Phosphate group will be very important, but we will learn those uh, when we get to the molecules that make them important. Um, this is very important. <laughs> We will study about adenine triphosphate, ATP, because it is the energy molecule in the body. And when we look at cellular, cellular respiration, the forming of ATP and the breaking down of ATP to ADP will be extremely important, and you will need to know the chemistry of it. Um, ATP consists of an organic molecule, hydrogens and ox uh, hydrogen carbons and hydrogens, called adenosine, attached to a string of three phosphate groups. There's that phosphate stuff. ATP stores the potential to react with water, a reaction that releases energy to be used by the cell. So ATP will react with water to release energy and um, go into ADP, which then can be recycled in the body. So. ATP will be very important for you to remember. So, question to ponder as we finish this. 
Could life elsewhere in the universe be based on an element other than carbon? And then uh, you can explain your answer. You don't have to answer that right now, but be prepared to think about it. You might see it again sometime.